Good morning. We have been looking together at the book of Numbers, and particularly Numbers 28 and 29, the sacrifices that were a part of the rhythm of daily life uh, in the Old Testament age, and then the sacrifices that particularly made up the annual cycle of festivals. So we've learned about the festivals in other places like Leviticus 23, but here we're, we're just treated to an understanding of all these various animal sacrifices that were necessary, uh, the particulars of them, according to each instance. And last time in Numbers 28, we looked at those festivals, Passover and Pentecost, that have a special fulfillment in the coming of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, uh, and his resurrection. And then uh, Pentecost, which is the, the festival that really pointed to the pouring out of the Holy Spirit and the gathering of the nations of the world. So we see the New Testament fulfillments of these two things in, in the Gospels and in Acts 2, telling us uh, about the coming of our Savior and his death as the Passover lamb, and then this greatest of all gifts uh, poured out upon the church. Uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, so now in chapter 29, the remaining festivals are spoken of. And here we're talking about things that we're actually still waiting for the fulfillment of these festivals. We, we no longer do these as Christians, but um, they have a meaning that will find their fulfillment in the second coming of Christ. So all of these festivals were, were clustered around the seventh month, and that sounds just about right to me, that month seven, the idea of the, this time of perfection, where all these festivals occurred there with, within a, uh, a few weeks, and they seem to be sort of the capstone of everything that we can expect in this world that is uh, fading away and under the uh, sentence of futility from Almighty God. So the first thing that we come upon is the Feast of Trumpets. And again, we're told um, this, there's, there's certain sacrifices necessary. One bull from the herd, one ram, seven male lambs, a year old without blemish, a grain offering um, mixed with oil, and so forth. You see these various things that were necessary to be done, right? No particular comment on the meaning of it, but we know as New Testament believers that we're waiting for the day when the trumpet will sound. So then they were they were having a special time for the uh, for blowing the trumpets. But one day the great trumpet will sound and then and the dead in Christ shall be raised and we will be together with the Lord forever. Now the very next festival is uh, on the tenth day of that month. So uh, trumpets is the first day of the seventh month. And the Day of Atonement is the 10th day of the seventh month. And this is a day for afflicting oneself. Uh, the uh, scriptures tell us this is about true repentance and mourning over one's sins. And I think the correspondence here in, in terms of future events is the coming of the Day of Judgment, which is, uh, on one hand, it's a, a very frightening day, but also a day when we will have the fulfillment of salvation coming to us because Christ has taken our judgment upon us and he he is our atonement. And then finally, on the 15th day of the seventh month, we have the, the great and final feast, Tabernacles. Uh, and this, this feast, is it lasts uh, really seven days and then an eighth day on top of it. And it's, it's just a, a great celebration of dwelling together with the Lord. And I think the idea of it having these seven days in the seventh month and, and then an eighth day that seems to be a symbol of going on forever, if this is about eternal life that Christ will bring for us. So, you know, I, I think one thing that we can see in all of this is that the whole system of sacrifices connected to festivals meant that the annual life of Israel was just bathed in blood, that without the blood of an atoning sacrifice, there could never be peace with God. But the second thing has to do with the fact that we're headed in a direction. There is a future for us. There is a culmination of all things. 
And in fact, when we celebrate Sabbath today, which is our remaining biblical calendar for us, that every week we celebrate Sabbath, we are rejoicing in the resurrection. And with the author of Hebrews, we say there remains yet a Sabbath rest for the people of God. So we are we want to enter into that rest. That's a that's a daily delight for us. And especially on the first day of the week now, we celebrate this new and eternal rest. Let's pray. Father, thank you that Christ has won for us the great rest of the new heavens and the new earth. Lord, we're grateful for all these many gifts that you have for your children. And we look forward in hope to the future that has been secured by our Redeemer. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you one and all. Have a great day.